Well, hello there, friends. You're listening to Mastering the Task Exam with me, Mr. Abe Tasconi. Today's task science lesson is reproduction and heredity. Here's today's test tip for the task exam. Don't study and clutter. You need to make sure that you're not distracted. That way you can give 100% of your focus to your studies. To do this, you'll need to organize the area you plan to study in. Make it a comfortable space with good lighting. Today we're going to celebrate one of the most important plants in the history of science. I'm looking at you, pea plant. This green beauty paved the way for our current understanding of reproduction and heredity. Business first, though. The first thing we need to know is that all organisms reproduce. If something's classified as living, it reproduces. Now there's two types of reproduction. The first type of reproduction is asexual reproduction. You can think of it like a game of solitaire. Asexual reproduction occurs when a single organism produces offspring that's identical to itself. It takes two for the second type of reproduction, which is sexual reproduction. This occurs when two parent organisms contribute a sex cell to form a unique offspring with characteristics from both parents. Now we come to traits, which are physical characteristics of organisms. Traits are determined by genes, which is a unit of DNA and controls the development of one or more traits. It's known as the basic unit of heredity. We'll talk about this in the next video titled Genetics Today. Heredity is the passing of traits from one parent to its offspring in asexual reproduction or by two parents to their offspring in sexual reproduction. Now we come to this man, Mr. Gregor Mendel. He was an Austrian monk who was fascinated by plants. He noticed that the plants he bred would sometimes look like the parent plants, and sometimes they'd look different. Now, Mendel really loved peas, so one day he decided to breed purebred pea plants. Pure breed means plants that always produce offsprings with the same trait as the parent. The first thing Mendel noticed was that purebred short pea plants would always produce short offspring. Likewise, purebred tall pea plants would always produce tall offspring. One day, Mendel decided to turn it up a notch. He crossed the purebred short pea plant with the purebred tall pea plant. The results were the first generation were all tall pea plants. Next, he decided to breed the first generation of pea plants, and something strange happened. About three-fourths of their offspring were tall, and about one-fourth were short. Mendel really loved his peas, so for the next ten years he kept breeding pea plants and determined that individual factors from each parent plant controlled the inheritance of either tall or short genes. Which brings us to the Punnett square. A Punnett square is a graphical representation that predicts the probability of offspring having certain traits. Now before we learn how to do a Punnett square, there's some terminology we should know. These words include allele, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous. An allele is a form of a gene. An individual inherits two alleles for each gene, one from each parent. Remember, in sexual reproduction, each parent contributes one allele for a specific trait. Alleles are represented by a letter in a Punnett square. The trait of a dominant allele will always be present in an organism. A dominant trait is always represented by an uppercase letter. Tall is considered a dominant trait in pea plants. In Greek, homo means same. A homozygous dominant pea plant would consist of two uppercase letters in a Punnett square. This pea plant would be tall. The trait of a recessive allele will only be present if a dominant allele is absent. 
a recessive trait is always represented by a lowercase letter. Short is considered a recessive trait in pea plants. Remember, in Greek, homo means same. A homozygous recessive pea plant would consist of two lowercase letters in a Punnett square. This parent pea plant would be short. In Greek, hetero means different. A heterozygous pea plant consists of one uppercase letter and one lowercase letter in a Punnett square. This pea plant would be tall. Think of an uppercase letter as a bully. As long as there's one uppercase letter in the set, the trait exhibited by the offspring will be dominant. You can only have a recessive trait show if both letters are lowercase. Now let's do a Punnett square. So the first thing you'll need to do is grab some paper and a pencil, pen, or color markers. Draw a square and divide it into four sections like this. After you do the first one, go ahead and draw a second one. Feel free to pause this video while you do each step. We're going to use one of the Punnett squares that you drew as a template. Go ahead and label the first Punnett square exactly like the picture on the right. Columns are always on top of a Punnett square. Rows are always listed on the side. To complete the Punnett square, we'll have to pair row 1 with column 1 and column 2. Likewise, row 2 will also have to be paired with column 1 and column 2. Now we need to identify each type of parent for the Punnett square. Would this parent pea plant be tall or short? I see a bully uppercase letter. This parent pea plant would be tall, and it would be classified as heterozygous. What about this parent pea plant? Is it tall or short? I see two lowercase letters, which means there's no bully uppercase letter present. So this parent pea plant is short. It's homozygous recessive. Now that we've identified the two parent pea plants, let's place them on the Punnett square. Let's put the heterozygous parent pea plant on top. I'm going to use blue marker to represent this parent. The other parent pea plant, which is homozygous recessive, will need to go on the side of the Punnett square. I'm going to use green marker to represent this parent. For the next steps, make sure you use the template that you made as a guide. Pair up the first row, lowercase green t, with the first column, uppercase blue t. Place those two letters in the first box. Always put the uppercase letter first to remind you that the trait will be dominant. Now it's time to pair up the first row lowercase green t with the second column lowercase blue t. Place those two letters in the second box. Pair up the second row lowercase green t with the first column uppercase blue t. Place those two letters in the third box. One more box to go. Pair up the second row, lowercase green t, with the second column, lowercase blue t. Place those two letters in the fourth box. Now it's time to look at the offspring in the boxes. How many boxes contain uppercase letters? There are two boxes that contain at least one uppercase letter. Two out of four offspring will be heterozygous and tall, so one half or 50%.
Remember, heterozygous will always be dominant because there's one uppercase letter present. The remaining two boxes have all lowercase letters, which means they have to be recessive, short. This means that two of the four offspring will be homozygous recessive, which is one half or 50%. And that, folks, is a Punnett square in a nutshell. Great job. All right, friends, don't forget to click the link in the description box to take my Quizlet on today's lesson. Practice makes perfect, especially with Punnett squares. I also have lots of links and worksheets. If you'd like to try your hand at some more Punnett squares, drop me an email at tasktestquestions at gmail.com. I'm more than happy to share. And speaking of sharing, thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I'm glad we can go on this journey together. Stay safe, friends, and keep on studying. I'd like to thank Chris Matthews for providing the music for this program, to Valerie Jeffers for co-producing, to Marion University and the Blue Umbrella for making this series possible, along with all the other teachers, townships, and adult basic education programs who help inspire adult learners to reach for the stars. Mr. Abe Tesconi is the alter ego of me, David Taylor. If you have any questions about the task exam or if you would like to try some of my quizzes, please email me at tasktestquestions at gmail.com. This has been a Jeffers and Taylor production. See you next time.